Good morning, folks, and how are you all doing today? I got myself a treat. I seem to do that a lot. Please bear with me. So for the vast majority of my work, this is the set that I use. It's a 36 set of Gallery Monkey O. Very high quality pastels, but they've, they've seen better days. Especially a few colors. And as you all know, I have a tendency to work in a lot of colors and having only 36 available to me is a little narrow. So what I did was I got the 72 set. Look at this guy. I don't even know if I can fit him on my desk properly. So today is going to be a review of the Mungio. You already know I love them. Just just to put that out there. But we're gonna go over why I love them. Are you ready for that? Then let's go. So now we switch to the desk view where my desk is as messy as ever. <laughs> Pretty sure this will be my last purchase for a while. Uh, I don't think that my bank can handle too many more pastels. Look at that box though. Oh my gosh. We've got some lovely gold lettering. The 36 set has silver lettering instead. Has a seal here. The 36 set lacks. Beautiful cloth texture. It's a list of all the colors that are in there. And a little booklet of all the products that they have. So the gold standard is the 120 size. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm not too concerned about having that many coal. Oh my gosh. Having that many colors. So if you wanted more to kind of change how you had them set up, uh, it's two trays of 36. Folks, the smell is fantastic. It is literally the same. It is the same tray. Now, oh my gosh. As you can see, oh, maybe you can't see. Let me try something darker. Very soft and creamy. Now I do have to go somewhere real quick. Um, so I'll have a quick cut here. As I say as I'm holding a knife. I'll have a quick cut here and then I'll join you back once I'm done. Okay, it is now quite a bit later in the day. I'm back from running errands. And I think it's time to give these a test. I have to say, after those pentels, the smell is just fantastic. Let's do a classic for me. Let's do an eye. I feel like an eye is a great way to tell pretty quickly the qualities of a pastel set. You've got a lot of different parts of an eye. You've got the white, can show a lot of light tones. You've got the pupil, shows a lot of dark tones. You've got the eye shine. You've got the eyelashes, can show fine details. Yes, just as I thought, very smooth. Like a newborn bottom. Actually, it's got me thinking that the set that I got is actually even older. Like this, this feels like a fresh set. And so I'm thinking, because my set was pulled off of a store shelf. So it's very portable that it just wasn't taken care of that well. Oh, it's actually raining now. Looks like white. And what is that one? Silver gray. Myers on top of itself. Well, I mean, obviously. What is that color? Oh. 
Let's put a really light color over top. This pale yellow. Just to make it obvious that it is in fact an eye. Now, skin. Oh my gosh, I have so many choices for skin. Uh, no reason to stop doing what I've been doing. So, there's a lot of neutrals, but there's no pale, pale pink. Big hot spot right here. more to add more than a few colors Yeah, pretty quick eye. I'm getting a little bit of uh, color, not not uh, color paralysis, more like color hesitation, because there's just so many here. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with that, but doing something bigger should help. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. Okay, here we are, back again to the voiceover. It never ends, does it? It's always one voiceover after another. Today, I'm using my giant sheet of paper, 18 by 24 drawing, not pastel. I wanted paper a little bit thicker than the pastel. I'm also using what is quite possibly my most worst, terrible Polarize pencil ever. It is an indigo blue and it has been completely shattered from top to bottom of its core. I'm actually not sure how it even managed to keep a point for this one. It does not for long. I'm also trying a new camera angle. I got out my collar tripod and I'm getting an angle from the back this time to maybe make it a little bit more smooth. The tripod that I've been shooting on is actually a camera tripod and not a video tripod, which is kind of funny. It's only about chest height, so I've been sitting down for a lot of it. Yeah, that's, I, I really dislike this about the cold erase pencils is you can hardly see anything that I'm doing until the pastel actually gets down. I don't know. Maybe I'll try drawing straight with pastel next time. This is not a promise. I'm not gonna have another repeat of the body week. I think I've also come to the conclusion, changing topics slightly, I hope you don't mind, but I've also come to the conclusion that the smell, the wonderful, wonderful smell coming from my pastel set here is actually the foam insert. So I'm probably going to be keeping that in the set for the future. It also helps a lot with actually transporting it. I tried putting it on its side for just carrying purposes and it shifted everything inside of it so it really needs that insert just to keep everything running smooth. It's just as well that I'm keeping that foam insert in. My 36 set is very messy. It is actually quite bothersome to look at because all the pastels have slid around and there's markings all up inside of it. I also do want to clarify that the 36 set will keep getting used. It's just going to be relegated to less desk pursuits. Like if I'm traveling somewhere, for example, I have an art show in about two months in July and they expect you to draw and, and uh, make art during that time while you're selling your art and having a smaller set for that would really help. And for obvious reasons, I don't really want to bring my 24 set of Karen Dash, which is a very expensive set, like out into the field where just anyone can grab it. I've got about 16 pieces right now that are ready to go for that. It's in another two months. I'm probably going to have double that by the time this comes around. 
Oh my gosh, I missed the first layer of pastels talking so much about my art walk. So going back to the piece that I'm actually working on, the whites of the eyes are going to be a dark green leading into the white green just because I kind of want to, you know, I don't, I don't have too many light greens in the 36 set and I'm kind of curious as to what that actually looks like. And then the irises are a gorgeous brown color. You know, I think this is one of the instances where the sketch ended up a lot better than the actual painting itself, unfortunately. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I, I do like this piece, just not as much as other pieces that I've done. But you never know what's gonna sell, so I might as well put it up on the same time that I'm putting up all of my other stuff, you know? Now, of course, the camera was off, but I've actually done another piece since then. Uh, it's a gorgeous piece of an old man with cataracts. I, I love that one so much, I mostly use neutral tones on it, because this set comes with a large, large amount of neutral tones. Going in on the outsides of the eyes now, I made a couple mistakes here. Uh, I don't think I went dark enough, to be honest. I didn't push the shading quite far enough in that direction, and so it kind of ends up being a little flat. I mean, we all make mistakes, right? I've often thought of art as just like an unending series of mistakes that you're desperately trying to get in front of and then suddenly the piece is finished and you're kind of just sitting there wondering how it actually got to that point. Like what are the actual steps? And I think recording what you're doing is actually very helpful in this regard because being able to actually go back and see what you were doing while you were too busy panicking inside your own head really helps plan out your process in the future. So Kaylee's advice this time is if you're hitting a roadblock with your art, maybe you record yourself drawing, or painting, or sculpting, or whatever creative pursuit you do. Maybe not writing, I'm not sure how writing would work for that. But maybe record yourself writing too, I don't know. Oh, or actually, leave yourself notes. Notes are almost as useful as recording and they don't require equipment such as a camera. I mean, you probably have a camera in your pocket right now that you could probably take to a surface or something. So maybe that's not as big of a roadblock as it was before, but notes work too. Like write down why you're using this color or this turn of phrase or why you're smacking the play with the toothbrush. I do like how bright those cheeks are. Going back, I'm actually supposed to be talking about the painting. So maybe let's talk about the painting for a couple of seconds and then we'll go back. Things about that I like it are one, the eyes are very good. I like the eyes. They are bright and they are determined and I like them. Number two, the cheeks. I like the cheeks. They're very orange. That's a color that cheeks should not be, but I like it. Kind of going a little bit more neutral here, going into the chin. I gotta tell you, this was a hard picture to shade because there was a lot of shadow around the eyes and then there was really nothing else for the rest of the face. Like the the cheeks were almost the same shade as the as the chin, which was almost the same shade as under the eyes, which was almost the same shade as the forehead. So I'm really kind of just making stuff up as I go along. A good amount of time, uh, if it's not your artistic ability that is obviously holding you back, it is probably the reference photo that is holding you back. You gotta pick your pick a good reference photo. Something that is dynamic and shadowed and an interesting angle. Maybe has a unique turn to it. I picked this photo because I liked how determined the young woman in the photo looks, but you know, that doesn't, an expression does not a painting make. Starting in on the forehead, we got the lower half of the painting done, this beautiful, beautiful face, and let's just get the rest of it finished, shall we? So this painting is kind of a big part of what I like to call color indecision. Like I have 72 colors at my disposal and I pick the same yellows and oranges that I did with the 36 set. I mean, there's a couple of greens and blues in there, but it really the, the main bulk of the painting is red and orange. Those lips though. Oh my gosh, those lips are so pretty. I love those lips. If there's one thing this set has going for it, it is an impressive array of pinks. I should do a painting that is entirely pinks and neutrals, I think would be a good challenge for me. Now the problem with pinks though is that they're quite often a fugitive color, what we call a fugitive color, which means that the pigment does not last long. And in direct sunlight, it'll often fade quite a bit faster than the rest of your painting. Once again, I'm talking so long that I miss an important part. I'm doing up the hair. 
The hair, I think, is the best hair that I've done so far. It is gorgeous, it is a messy bun, and I love it so much. I primarily use two shades of brown and a shade of blonde, and also blacks for deep shadows. Now, when I say brown, really I mean a brown and like a brick red. I, I consider that a brown. It's part of the neutral set in this particular pastel set. I actually really like how normal the hair looks in, in contrast to the rest of the face. Speaking of more painting, of course, uh, the painting is what we're here to watch and the painting is what I'm here to talk about. Speaking of the painting, I am painting the neck. The neck is doing its thing in contrast to the rest of the face, which is mostly reds and oranges and yellows, and it's going to be a shade of purple. Kind of blobular, not my best neck, but moving on. Just about everything from the chin down is an afterthought, including the clothing, which I am now starting on. The clothing is a hoodie and a jacket, and I think I'm going in with a green. Yes, as soon as my hand moves, you will see that it is a green. One of the drawbacks to this particular angle is that you don't really get a good view of when my hand is doing its thing. Maybe I should do some studies of fabric because this is really not looking that convincing right to me right now. That is the number one lesson of art. Above all others, if it does not look good, you are not bad at it. You are simply not practiced at it. And the solution to practice is practice. Practice, practice, practice. If you're not good at hands, then draw 50 hands. If you're not good at clothing, then draw 50 clothing. If you have an internet connection that is good enough to watch what I am doing, let alone what other more practiced artists are doing, then you should have enough of an internet connection to be able to look up reference photos for whatever it is you are lacking. And now for something a little simpler though, starting in on the background, we're doing a bright yellow circle with a red outline. And of course, not wanting to use up my good pastels and leave holes in my color selection, I am going with Crayola. Yes siree, Bob, that good old staple Crayola. They make the best and brightest of the cheap pastels. Actually, I think Pentel might have them beat in terms of best, best pastel, but they're also a lot larger. The Crayolas, the Pentels are kind of like little baby pastels. I think though in the future good practice for uh, changing f background or foreground is actually laying down a layer of workable fixative. Uh, I have a spray can, just a normal spray can, of Grumbacher workable fixative. It's very good. So what fixative does is it actually seals in the pastel and makes it unable to be worked or mixed, which is which is uh, good in certain situations. Uh, normally, one of the better things about pastels is that they are mixable and you don't really want to take that away unless you're specifically trying to get a clean look to it. And with the signature, it is done. Goodbye. So really, what is there to say about these? This enormous set that I got. They are smooth. They are pigmented. They are buttery. They are cheap. The retail price of my 24 set of Karen Dash is only about 20 bucks cheaper than this 72 pack of Mungio Gallery. There's the princess. I'm still deciding whether or not I want to actually hang her up. She's gonna sit in the sketchbook for now. If you like this video, please let me know by leaving a like and a subscribe. That's about it for me. Until next week, have a wonderful time.